Hey guys, I'm Dakota with Millspec Distributions. Um, today we're gonna run through a quick startup and shutdown. Uh, there might be some different methods that you guys use uh, in the past, but I'm uh, just gonna run you through how we traditionally train our guys to start up and shut down some of the little ticks and things like that that we normally do. Anyways, let's get started. All right, so first off, uh, before you ever get going, you wanna make sure that your resin material has been mixed properly. Um, so we're gonna wanna go ahead and mix that for, if it's a new barrel, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, a great way to time that is gonna be using the, uh, the hose heater as kind of our timer. Um, so let's get started. We'll come over here to our air agitator. Uh, it's always a good idea to put a couple drops of air tool oil into your air agitator. Go ahead and plug this bad boy in now. All right, go ahead and spin that on. We're gonna wanna be about a half speed. We don't want it super fast because we don't want a bunch of frothing or anything like that. So go ahead and get that going. A decent speed. Now, again, like I was saying, we're gonna use the hose heat kind of as our timer for our mixing on our resin barrel. So we're gonna come over here to our reactor now. Go ahead and kick on the main power on the right-hand side. Let the uh, reactor EXP2 go through its startup. This is an awesome machine, has a ton of diagnostics for you, uh, a ton of troubleshooting and things like that. But it's also still kind of the same process as even if you're using the EXP1 machine. So anyways, it's going through the load up screen. That's done. Let's go ahead and hit the power button top left hand corner. You'll notice on the home screen right here, um, you'll have your A, your B, your hose heat, and obviously your PSI is over here to the side. Let's go ahead and kick on our hose heat. You'll notice that it's gonna go from blue to gray and that little green light's gonna start blinking. Um, we're at 70 degrees right now, so it'll probably take uh, anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes for that to go from 70 to 145 to 155 degrees, which is where we're gonna want it at. Uh, we traditionally spray BL1 material at 155 degrees. So um, we're gonna go ahead and let this heat up to 155 degrees or somewhere around there while we'll go ahead and we start working on our, our truck or whatever our project is for the day. Um, and the whole time while this is heating up, this is agitating and mixing. When this finally gets up to that 155 degrees, that means that this uh, resin barrel has mixed long enough. So at that point, we can go ahead and shut that down and uh, go ahead and start our, our warming up process. Come over here and turn off our air agitator. Um, I do like to go ahead and unhook the hose at that point, just to have it done and go ahead and have it unplugged. All right, and then at that point, we're going to go ahead and start warming our barrels up. So we're gonna start our recirculation process. So we'll come back over to the machine. Uh, go ahead and turn on your screen, hit your A and your B temperatures. At that point, you'll see the little light will be flashing. Then you know that your heaters are engaged. All right, now what we can do is we can go ahead and come to the red and blue handle down here. You'll see a little cheat sheet here for you, uh, little emblems. Uh, obviously, if the handles are pointing towards you, that means it's in spray mode. What we want is we want it in recirculation mode. So we're gonna flip out the blue and the red handles, turning them away from us. And at that point, you'll notice that the stick pumps are gonna start chiming. Those are gonna start moving material. So right now what's happening, it's going from barrel to machine, being heated up and put back in the barrel. Uh, at that point, you're gonna wanna get these barrels up to about 80 degrees for the most part. So that's probably gonna take 20 minutes depending on where they're at when you start it out. Uh, if it's a cold morning, it might take a little bit longer. Now, come back to the machine. Uh, we've, we've tested to make sure that the barrels are up to temperature. All right, they're at 80 degrees, that's good for us. We're gonna go ahead and come to the machine now. These red and blue handles that are flipped out, we're gonna go ahead and flip these in towards us. Again, towards you is spray mode. Now it means whenever we come up here to this main screen, we will be able to pressurize. The top right button up here uh, has a little green emblem. That is the pressurization button. So when we press that, this machine is gonna jump up to whatever your target PSI is. So. Well, we've got our handles towards us. We're gonna go ahead and press the pressurization button, fire that up, bring it up to 2,500 PSI. It'll do it quick. These are very strong pumps, so it, it'll do it fast. Now we're up to PSI, we're at 2,500. Uh, we wanna go ahead and check and make sure that our A and our B are matching or within 200 pounds is where I like them normally be. Um, so you can hit, look at the analog, which is down here, and you can also see up here digitally. Um, you'll see the A and the B, and right here next to it, they'll have their own pressure readout. That's one of the great things about the EXP2. So uh, let's see, we're, we're within pressures right there, so everything is great. We can go ahead at this point, 
we can move over to our gun. Um, we're going to now go ahead. Remember, the first thing you ever want on is your air, and the last thing you ever want off is your air. So really, if this gun's ever gonna be used, you wanna make sure you always have air running to it. It is an air purge, so that's gonna keep any of the residual material from building up inside the chamber uh, and having a nightmare of cleaning. You don't want that. Remember, when you're opening up the valves on this uh, fusion gun, you really don't wanna bear down on, on any of it. Uh, I highly suggest, if you can, hold the nut driver by your fingertips. Don't grab it in your palm. Um, some strong guys out there might accidentally bear down on it too much either opening it or closing it, and you'll start to get leaks over time. You don't want that. So use your fingertips. Now we have our air on, so we're gonna wanna go ahead and crack open. You can start with your ISO or your resin, doesn't matter, but make sure you open it slowly. Remember, you are at 2,500 PSI, um, so you wanna go ahead and open it slowly and watch for any leaks that you may have. Open up your B side, uh, and then go ahead and go open up your A side. Again, check in, make sure you don't have any leaks or anything like that. Once you're good to go on that point, you can go ahead and move over to your test spray area. Uh, we have air going through it, but the safety is on. Safety is located on the back. So go ahead and push in and turn to the left to be able to release the safety. Now the trigger is hot. You can go ahead and start spraying. Once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing in reverse. We're gonna obviously make sure that we have our safety on, pushing in and turning to the right. And then we're gonna come over to our, our area wherever we're gonna be storing our gun and our hose. We're gonna get our nut driver. We'll go ahead and shut our A and shut our B again using fingertips. I'm not trying to bear down on anything to break anything. Um, once that's done, I highly suggest, uh, I really like between projects to put a little bit of grease in the web, in the gun. Um, so uh, I would suggest putting two, two pumps or so of grease in it. You can do that by reaching up over here on this. This is a little grease cap. You'll use your nut driver that you use to open and close the valves on the gun. You'll use that to go ahead and take, remove this cap. One or two pumps. Now we're done. You'll see just maybe a little bit of grease come out. Perfect, you don't want a ton. Uh, now at this point, go ahead and put your cap back on. At this point, you can actually go ahead and shut down the air on your gun because the next thing that we're gonna do is now that we have the air off, we're gonna take a little dab of grease and we're actually gonna put it over the end of the gun, right over the mixing chamber, the, the, uh, the orifice of the gun. Um, that will just keep a little bit of air and things like that from getting into the gun, say over the weekend and stuff like that. The least amount of air inside the system, the better, all right? A little bit of grease, we're good to go. Go ahead and put this up. Uh, now we can go ahead and come back over to the machine. All right, the machine's at 2,500 PSI. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll tick on the screen by uh, hitting any one of these arrows. You'll see the screen will light back up. Now, come up to the top right-hand corner. This light will be flashing. It'll be a green little green uh, blinking light. Go ahead and click that. Once that light stops, that means the system is no longer engaged. It will not try to stay at 2,500 PSI. Uh, now, if you open up these valves. So, we've disengaged this. Let's come down here to our red and our blue handles. Again, towards you is spray mode, out is recirculation mode. When you flip it to recirculation mode, it'll drop its pressure. So, let's go ahead and flip these out. You'll notice your pressure drops all the way down. So, go ahead and flip it back into spray mode. Um, at that point, if it's the end of the day, at that point, we can go through what I call a parking process. Um, and what this is gonna do is just gonna be able to seat the pumps in the down position. Um, that way no fluid is moving uh, and no possibility for air and things like that to get in the machine. Again, we don't want any air into the system. So at the end of the day, we like to go ahead and put it in a park system or park mode and that eliminates that possibility. So the way to do that, we've already dropped our pressures down. We're at zero and zero. We can see that up here on the A and the B as well on the digital scale. Um, so now what we're gonna do is you'll see a the one button right below the pressurization button is the park button. It'll be a P with a circle around it. Um, go ahead at that point, you can press that button. You'll see the little light will be blinking. We've gone ahead and we've hit park. It's at the bottom of the resolution. We are at a couple hundred PSI. And at that point, we can go ahead and hit the power off button. That'll put it at a, uh, you'll see all the options for button will disappear at that point. And you'll even notice in the top left, it'll say EXP2 off, all right? And then at that point, we can go ahead and go over to the, the red switch on the right hand side. You can go ahead and shut off the main power at this point. Boom, the machine is off. So it's good to go for the night or for the weekend or whatever it may be. All right, but I do also suggest coming over now, coming over to the stick pumps. Um, again, we've already unhooked the agitator line. So I really like to go ahead and unhook the stick pump lines as well, the air lines, I mean. Um, I like to go ahead and unhook those so that way 
in the beginning of the day, tomorrow or Monday, whatever it may be, you remember to put air tool oil in there. Again, we always wanna make sure we're doing that just to be help the longevity of, of, your, of your equipment. Um, at that point, you are good to go for the day. You can go ahead and shut down um, and enjoy your, enjoy your evening. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming, tuning in and watching. If you guys have any comments or if you guys uh, have any suggestions on things that uh, you like to do in your system, uh, please let us know. We always like to hear feedback, things like that. Um, and let us know how we can do a better job. Appreciate it. Thank you.